my personal YouTube channel, Kurt Hedquist. So if you can Google search that, it'll be on there. So part one's on there. And we're going to keep tonight about an hour or so. And so that way it it's, keeps it pretty, pretty even keeled here. and doesn't, Nobody gets bored and tapers off and falls asleep here. But anyway, um, again, thank you for joining in. And uh, we're going um, to go over a few things here before we jump into the app. There's some really cool stuff available here. And uh, let's get started here. Um, anyway, a little, those of you that weren't here last weekend, a little bit about me. I'm, uh, my name is Kurt Hedquist, of course, thing, and uh, I'm a Navionics Marine Specialist. Um, I'm a walleye tournament angler in the upper Midwest. With, I fish with my son, Mac, on the right-hand corner there. Lower, I'm sorry, lower, yeah, lower right-hand corner. And we've been fishing some tournaments together, go out and have fun. We do some ice fishing. Um, some other things is I also work with uh, Bruce Doc Sampson. And if you're not familiar, familiar with Doc, he's Dr. Sonar. Um, he's got a website called drsonar.com. And so I help him out there. He's got a lot of great information available there on Sonar and things like that. Um, he's on Facebook. And I help him with the schools, his Facebook page, um, and things like that. And uh, you can, again, look us up on drsonar.com. And um, you can also look me up on, uh, the, what you, on the website, Kurt Hedquist, or L, Kurt Hedquist Outdoors LLC. Um, if anybody has any questions down the road about Lawrence products, I've been on the pro staff for about six years now. I'm pretty current on all the latest gadgets that come out from them. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. I have my email address down below there. Or if you're on Facebook, um, check it out my fan pages. There's Kurt Head Coast Outdoors LLC fan page and at Dr. Sonar. And uh, if you can feel free, yeah, grab some questions, any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Um, some of you may have seen me on some of the website blogs as more eyes, Kurt H or K Headquist. So there's a few of them that I'm on. Um, we're going to touch briefly on this because this may come up because what I'm going to show you on. I'm going to use the um, my um, iPad, which is going to have a few different features on it than the Android product. But the primary difference between the two platforms are the auto, auto routing is available on iOS only, and it's coming for Android. And I'll show you how that works. Um, and the number of a number of saved markers. Markers is your waypoints and routes and tracks. Um, Another one is marker icons, and I'll show you those as we go along here. Marker icons, again, are waypoint icons. Android only has a pin. iOS offers you several different options. Uh, the tracking console and playback, I'll show you how that works as we go in here, but it's available on iOS only, and it's coming for Android. Um, some have asked, you know, what's why does one app cost more than the other one? The uh, the uh, iPad app or your tablet app is compatible, is designed to operate off of a bigger screen. It's optimized. It costs a little bit more to make and things like that. So, um, so if you want to think, you can't buy the the phone app and hope it'll work on your iPad or your bigger tablet. So you gotta, you know, you gotta step up a little bit. Down below here, put some prices uh, comparative between the two of them. Here, we're not going to go over that. I went over that last week. Um, what we're going to go over tonight with um, touch base on is we're going to go over the, nav the features of the Navionics Plus upgrade. So if you can, the, the basic app is free, but there is a uh, Navionics Plus upgrade feature, which gives you a lot of really cool features in it. And so that's what we're going to focus on tonight. So those of you that don't have, that have the free boning app, you're not going to see this stuff. What you're going to see is on the left-hand side of the screen. And, uh, and what we're going to go over will be on the um, right-hand side of the screen. Um, some of the features that we're going to cover tonight in this session two is what they call shallow water highlighting, depth shading, depth contours, and rather than reading all this stuff, I'll show you actually how it works. Um, water level offset, seabed areas, there's a fishing mode, 
and a fishing range. A lot of cool stuff that's available here. So we'll, we're gonna show you actually how that all works on there. Um, some more features of the Navionics Plus. You get uh, advanced features. Um, you get a navigation module, advanced map options, dock to dock auto routing, which is available on iOS again, and some advanced features. One of the things though on these advanced features is the, the Navionics Plus is a one year subscription. So after your one year subscription, the advanced features will expire with Navionics Plus. So you have to renew your subscription, your yearly subscription to your Navionics Plus if you want to keep these functions. Your app will still function the same. You'll still have all the same data, but you won't be able to renew your charts and you won't get these advanced map options, these advanced features that are um, on Navionics Plus. So. Uh, website, real quickly, website has got some great information that's available. Um, if you want to go to Navionics.com, some of the things you want to look at is um, there's a tab at the top there I got circled. It's called mobile, and that'll give you some more information on the mobile app, some more, you know, kind of what we're going over, but it'll give you some, you know, some of the sales liter sales points and things like that. Um, the other thing on the website is called a web app, and there, all the data that's available on all, across all the Navionics mapping pro, um, product line is available for, to view on the web app. So if you want to preview mapping, um, at your computer, you can go to the web app. One thing I will say is after you zoom in, you'll want to click on, on the lower left-hand corner of the screen, there'll be a little sonar icon. Click on that, and that will give you your sonar chart um, um, layer, and that's the um, layer that Navionics develops as they get sonar, as they get mapping updates and things like that. So that's where you want to zoom in to see the real detail of a lake. Um, Compatibility chart, drop down to the bottom, scroll down to the bottom of the website there, you'll see a compatibility chart, and there you can find out, let's say, let's say you're gonna go buy a new phone, or you wanna wonder if your, your app will work on a particular phone, there's a compatibility chart there, click on that, and you will see mobile devices. You can make sure your, the app will work on your phone that you're getting, or your tablet. Um, couple of things we're gonna, Okay, a couple of things we're going to talk about real quickly here is um, some of us are lacking ice. Minnesota, I think, is starting ice over, but there's some parts of maybe the upper Midwest or up the north that's a little short on ice. And one of the things that Navionics can give you that, let's say, you still got open water, you can actually go on the water and do some um, live mapping that will record to your um, your, your mobile device. And um, we'll go over that a little bit, but one of the devices, so what, I, what I'm thinking, what I'm saying here is you can go out and actually do some mapping on some of these lakes that maybe, or maybe you got a small lake or a pond or something like that, uh, maybe you're in North Dakota, some of these lakes that don't have any mapping. You can physically go out and with the open water, drive around the lake and map the lake. And I'll show you some examples of how it works here a little bit later when we get into the app but uh, basically you can enhance your lake mapping or even more detail. And, um, and then, um, so I'll show you how that works here a little bit. Some of the devices you can do that with are the sonar phone um, or, and uh, the GoFree Wi-Fi module. Let's say you're running a Gen 3 unit um, or any Lawrence product. If you have GoFree Wi-Fi module or the HDS Gen 3, you can connect up your mobile app to your, um, mobile device, your mobile device up to your, up to one of these here, and you can do um, sonar charts live, it's called, and I'll show you how that works. And the other one too is if you don't have a sonar phone, a GoFree, a Lawrence with either GoFree or Gen3, you can buy what they call a sonar server module, and it's a lower right-hand corner there. It's basically a, a Wi-Fi module that you wire into your NEMA 183 on, a, on many sonars, and you can do sonar chart live. Here's a little bit of an example of how it works out here. Um, you can see this is actually a track I did on a lake called South Lindstrom. Um, just cruising around the lake there. And you can see there's, you can even get more detail. Um, so you can get some of these, maybe some of these small points and pockets and things like that. And, and uh, this stuff will then be 
available on your mobile device. So you might find some hidden gems under the water to go ice fishing on or some key pieces, some key structure pieces. So um, here's an example of what I did on a river, Upper St. Croix. Before, there was no contour lines up there. I went up, made some passes on the, on the Upper St. Croix. Did some sonar chart live recording, and this is what ended up after the fact. So you can see, you can go from a lake with no mapping to a lake with mapping, and so you can find these some structure out there to fish on, holes, points, pockets, things like that. Um, so if this is gonna work, you know, here. Just a little quick video I did of it, how it works out here. So you can see my boat driving around, um, lake bottom down below there. This is using the, um, the Vexlar sonar phone in my duck boat. And I strapped it to the Vexlar sonar phone to my duck boat, put a 12 volt battery in there, and hooked it up to my iPad and cruised around the lake for a little bit and found some pretty cool stuff out there. So, anyway, we're going to get going to the nuts and bolts of this whole thing. Um, again, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to. Um, Make a note on top there and I'll stop and try and answer any questions that we have going on here. So um, some of the things we're going to cover here tonight are we're in this bottom center section here where it says route start menu. We're going to cover go into that with a little bit in some detail. So if you have your iPad, your iPhone or your Android phone or your tablet ready, pull up your app and you can follow along here. Again, I remind you of some of these features. If you're running the Android, you may not have some of these features as I'm using my iPad here because there's a little bit of difference between the two product lines. Eventually they will merge together so they will be the same, but just a heads up. And then we're gonna go over on the lower left-hand corner, we'll talk about the, the, two, the sonar icon and the GPS centering icon there. So let me... So all of you should be seeing my iPad screen right now. So, um, so anyway, we're going to get started here. We're going to start on the uh, in the menu section here. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in the menu there, and uh, there we go. Now we're back. I hope nobody left. At least it gave somebody time to go get a get a beer or something like that. So, um, now we're better. Well, I hope I didn't lose anybody, but give you a little intermission here. Um, anyway, we're gonna start in the bottom here, bottom on the menu section. So we'll tap on your menu feature. Um, what you got going on here is this is where you're gonna save up your track. This is your archives, your, where you're gonna find your tracks, your routes, your markers, and things like that. Um, we touched briefly about downloading the maps and uh, um, downloading maps in part one. We can touch a little, touch a little bit on that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over some map options, things like that. So let's uh, touch briefly on markers. This is where you're gonna find your archives for your tracks and so on and so forth. So if you, um, well, let's start on markers actually, markers, waypoints. This is where you're gonna find all your waypoints or markers in this, in this um, menu right here. So let's just start on marker 18. Um, so what it's gonna do is, um, you can um, it'll, if you tap on it, it'll take and show you the show you the, show you where it's at. If you um, touch on the actual on the lake map itself, you can either you, here's a couple of cool things. You can either do a boat to, so it's a go to. Um, let's say you want to edit it. If you tap on where it says marker 18, your keypad will pop up, and you can type in you know here you can do uh, December and then save it. Um, it gives you your latitude, longitude, and then we can save it right there. And you notice right below that it said delete. If you want to clean those out, you can delete them off. And um, so anyway, that's your markers. Uh, routes, we can build routes and we can save routes, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit, but this is where you find your route 
information that you saved, but you can also edit those routes in this in this menu also. So um, let's see here's and it will show you on the lake, show you where it, you know here I played with one. Uh, it'll show you the layout of the route so you can go to it. So if you tap on route. Menu tracks. This is kind of a cool feature. Um, you can record your track and you can actually on iOS you can play it back. And um, and let's see here, webinar demo. Let's uh so here's one right here on iOS is what I did. And I'll show you how to do this here in a little bit, but I just want to demonstrate this here is track. It'll actually record where you've gone in your boat or your car. You can do this on the land, water, air too. I did it on an airplane one time to track the airspeed too, which is kind of interesting. But it'll follow along. You can see in the in this one corner up here, it shows you the speed, um, the duration, the direction, the heading, things like that. So you can just kind of drag it along here, speed it up a little bit here, and close that out. And I will show you how to do that in a little bit here. Um, let's run down the menu section here some more. Um, download map. We'll, we'll touch briefly on this one again. Let's say you're going to an area that doesn't have you any cell phone coverage, and but you can use you, if you got a built-in your your phone has a built-in GPS receiver, you can you can utilize it as a handheld GPS. What you can do, let's say you're going to all here's Mille Lacs Lake. You're going out to Mille Lacs Lake. You can actually zoom in on there and you click download and it will download that area of the map of that lake. So it's stored up in the memory of your on your phone or your iPad and so on and so forth. This information doesn't take a lot. A lot of people have asked me how much memory does this eat up. It's very little memory in the big scheme of things. So anyways, again, you can use if you lose cell phone coverage and you download an area to your to your device. You can use it as a handheld GPS. Your um, GPS, little track just like a GPS will, a handheld GPS. Um, another way you can download an area is if you zoom in real tight and drag around, it automatically downloads that particular area to your, to your mobile device. Um, that's the way it's set up. It's an automatic feature. When you zoom in tight, again, it just automatically downloads. Um, one of the questions I had was, how do I know what areas I've downloaded in my, uh, that I have downloaded in my mobile device? Um, menu, let's see here. Back up here just a little bit so you don't get lost. Close. So if you tap on menu, go to map options to the right there, and tap on no overlay, so back that out. If you zoom out far enough, those are the areas, you see where it's yellowed out right there? Those are the areas that I've downloaded to my iPad or downloaded to my iPad. So you can see the various areas that I've, so those areas are basically built in mapping. So if you lose, I mean, if you go to like Lake of the Woods or up into Canada where you don't have um, a cell phone coverage, you can utilize your mobile device as a handheld GPS. One thing I will tell you though, you gotta make sure you download this stuff before you lose your cell phone coverage, or if you got Wi-Fi, let's say you're in a bar or a resort or a hotel where you get Wi-Fi coverage. You can download it to the, into your mobile device here. But again, what I did there, in order to see what, what I had downloaded areas is I went to menu, tapped on the menu, Map options, and we'll turn back on the satellite imagery. So you can see all those areas that are downloaded go away. But if you turn that off, go to no overlay, that's the areas that you downloaded. And again, there's two ways you can do that. You can click on the download map, or if you zoom in real tight, if you zoom in tight enough and you drag around, that box will pop in. So like down the stuff around the bottom of the map here where Topeka, I was just demoing it and stuff like that. So that's the stuff I did. I just kind of zoomed in a real tight area and downloaded it to my mobile device. So um, I guess the only way you can keep it from downloading if you want to zoom in is to turn off your data plan or you know shut off your, your Wi-Fi coverage or whatever. 
and it won't download. So, um, again, if you're subscribed to Navionics Plus, you see right below where it says uh, up, uh, download map, you got update all. So, if you got Navionics Plus, a subscription, what it's going to do, it's going to tell you your charts are old. There is 285, 281 kilobytes of data available, and you can either choose to update it now or you can do it later. We're not going to do it because I don't want to take the time. But again, this is what you get with your Navionics Plus subscription. So I, um, as Navionics updates their charts, this is where you're going to see the information in the sonar chart layer, which is included in Navionics Plus. Let me just see if there's any, make sure I don't have any questions here. Hold on a second. Nothing yet. Okay, so nobody's confused or else you're sleeping. Um, so we went over updates, um, map options. Oh, let me back up one second. I missed something. Map options. Here's some cool stuff available in here. Um, again, we kind of looked at a little bit of this stuff here. Um, easy view is just like it says, easy view. Uh, if we click on that, it just makes everything bigger. It just it zooms everything in. So if you forget your glasses and you're like, you can't see anything, tap on the easy view. It magnifies the icons and text. Um, sonar chart live. If you've done any sonar chart recordings, you're gonna you'll be able to see those. And let me show you. Let's see. So you see all those squiggly lines and stuff like that? That's where I've gone out and done some sonar chart recording, sonar chart live recordings. And that stuff is saved up on your tablet. So you can toggle it on and off. Um, and again you, can, again, you can use this for future reference and things like that. Kind of a cool feature is you can actually put waypoints and stuff or markers on those various items. Um, one thing I'll we'll show you here real quick, if you've even done any sonar chart live recordings, is you tap on the screen and hold it, it's going to ask you if you want to swipe them. You can erase that data, but we're not going to do that. Um, but uh, you can actually tap. Okay. Close. There we go. We can put some waypoints on some of this stuff here. So let's tap and hold on the screen, see the cursor pop up there, we can drag it over. So let's say we want to put a waypoint on that little point right there, tap there, bam, save that. So now we got a waypoint on that little point right there, a little finger right there. And you just uh, um, tap on marker, and click on add. So now we've added a waypoint to that little spot right there. So that's kind of cool. I was showing you those sonar chart live recordings I did earlier. Um, back in my introduction, like I said, this is kind of a cool feature. You could go out and hit some of these little lights out in South Dakota and things like that, and you could actually map them and things like that. So you go out and find some really cool structure and stuff like that. Um, one thing I will tell you on Sonar Chart Live recordings is that the data is, is that information is uploaded in Navionics, and they process that data and they will add that to their, to their Sonar Chart layer. For all the mapping products across the board, so if you got a, a Navionix card, Navionix Plus, Hot Maps Platinum card, or in, your, or in your mobile app products, that data that's been recorded will then be sent to Navionix. They process that, they put that in the sonar chart layer of your map card or your um, mobile product. So um, let's options so we'll turn that off a little bit um any of you that fish any reservoirs or anything like that you can do or you can do a water level well, let's see hold on water level correction um what that is for is for like coastal areas where the tides and things like that so on and so forth so um around here we probably would be more well, I take that back. It also ties in with the sonar chart live recordings too. So if you turn that on, 
when you go on to Sonar Chart Live Recordings, it's going to ask you um, some questions before you do it. Is it inland waters? Is it coastal waters? Um, do you know the off is the water up, down, things like that? So that's where that comes into play. But uh, um, Sonar Chart Live Settings. This is where you can play with some of your sonar chart live. Um, let's turn that back on. Here you can kind of play with the uh, background colors a little bit. So you can change out the colors. So if you went out and did some sonar chart live recordings and you want those to pop on the screen so you can actually so you can see those, that's where you can change some of those enhance those colors for the sonar chart live and uh, make it much easier for you to do the C. Um, here's a good one, water level correction, water level offset. So, hold on, so I'm gonna close this out. Back out just a second. Water level offset. So let's say you're fishing on a river. Let's say you're fishing on a reservoir or something like that where the water is fluctuated. Here, you can offset the water. So if you know the water level is down, you know, let's say it's down 10 feet, you can either slide the slider over, or if you got big fingers like I do, you can tap on the 13 there, and you can um, then type in minus 10. If you want to dial it in exactly, let's say you just can't get that. Exactly, because your fingers are too big like mine to, uh, to, uh, to do that. So there, now we've just offset the water level down 10 feet, and it's gonna, it's gonna change the, the, the water level offset. It's gonna enhance the mapping to reflect that change in water level. You can go down to minus 150 feet, you go up 50 feet. So let's say you're on a reservoir like Lake, uh, like Oahe or someplace like that where the water levels change. I know if you're on Duluth, um, um, a lot of the power companies um, raise and lower the water level up there. Maybe over in Wisconsin and some of those reservoirs. Here you can raise and lower, the, uh, change the water level, and your mapping will then correspond to that. Um, we're going to turn off the fishing mode. This is where this is some of those features that are included in Navix Plus. Um, here we got our fish. I turn off the fishing mode. We're just going to touch base on these things right here because it's a little bit different to get off. You can do a shallow water um, highlight. So two things you can do here. Um, let's say you're fishing a lake and you want to, you know, you can anything less than uh, 19 feet or less is um, 19 or feet or less will then be highlighted. So you can see the dots there. Makes it much easier to find some of these key structures and key points, structure and things like that on the lake. So, um, so you can play with that a little bit, you know, to, to um, so, you know, you're sitting in your fish house, you want to figure out, oh, you know, it shows you where all these various humps are and things like that. So you can see anything that's 19 feet or less is highlighted. Um, so you can slide that. Again, all these where you see that little box, so you can tap on that. And you can type in that you can type in what you're looking for. So depth shading um, 15, close. So now 15 feet and less is shallow is highlighted in the, with the red there. Um, you can do some depth shading. That's a kind of a kind of a little bit of a different way of doing it too. You can um, slide that back and forth. So again. Um, 15 feet or less is shaded, so it makes it makes it really easy to find you know around what's in that depth range. So let's say you're out there fishing, you want to um, maybe drill some holes in ice in that 15 foot range. Um, you can, it's easy enough to find that and uh, those areas. Um, slide that over, turn it off. Uh, depth contour, sometimes lakes get a little cluttered. Here, you slide that over. You can, you can 
Another way you can key in on, um, you know, if you want to get rid of all the rest of the clutter, let's say um, 18 feet and less, now it has depth contours. So there's kind of three different ways you can highlight a, a depth range that you're working at. So we'll slide that over. Sonar chart density, what that will do is it will remove some of the, some of the contour lines off your map. So if you slide that from very high to low, you see that some of the clutter kind of goes away a little bit on your mapping. So maybe you find that the contour lines are get too, there's real dense. Maybe you want to back that off a little bit. Um, seabed area. One thing, I, one place I found that's really that's really handy. Let me zoom out here a little bit and uh, go to South Dakota. Let's see. Zoom in on the Missouri River here. Seabed area. There we go. What it's doing is showing you kind of a kind of a different composition. Not all lakes have this. Um, select lakes do have this. Um, it's what it's what it's doing is highlighting a change in bottom composition. Out here, um, what it's doing is it's highlighting the old river channel out there in the Missouri River. So if we turn that off, the sea battery goes away. That the, the that goes away um, again, indicating a change in bottom composition or let's say the old river channel out there so much of missouri river has this on there but again not every lake has this so if you're on a body of water you can turn it on and see if that your body of water has this on it uh, community edits again we touched that if you want to see what how to do those and things like that i went over that in part one of this presentation last monday but here you can turn the community edits on and off. Um, let's see here. Go back here. And how I just did that, where I jumped back to where I am, is I tapped on the, the uh, sonar icon or the uh, down below here. And uh, that took me back to, centered me up to exactly where we're sitting. So. We're gonna to go to Lake Marion, for example. Community edits, just to, just to touch briefly on them. That's community generated data or information that everybody can see if, uh, again, that's part of the Navix Plus. But uh, just to caution you, if you didn't miss it last week, I would go back if you're not sure what a community edited, how to do it um, versus a waypoint or a marker. You gotta be careful here, so. Community edits. If you tap on that, that'll turn them off and take away all your community edits. But again, community edits, just real quickly here. Suspend and sunny. So somebody put that on there, was out there fishing on, I don't know exactly when, February, 14, uh, February 23rd, 2014, at 3 32 p.m. Zachman created a community edit at that point. So he may, who knows, he may have wanted to keep that private to himself, but right now it's community data. Um, you'll see my private markers are some of the way, markers or waypoints that I made or I got highlighted right now. This is stuff that nobody else can see. So, so, and uh, so this is all your private data. And over here, Public data. Uh, let's see. Map options. Let's go back to map options. There's a couple more things we got to talk about here. So scroll up to where it says fishing mode, tap on that where it says fishing mode. You'll see a few more features pop up here. Some really cool stuff right here. The really cool one is called fishing range. And here, is where you can dial in. You'll see on your my map on your screen where you get the white band right there. Any anything between three to nine feet is highlighted in white. So, you know, if you want to punch a bunch of holes in that area, pretty cool deal. Um, you can slide that around a little bit. You probably don't have 
deep enough water on this lake for 22 feet. Ooh, no. Again, if you got big fingers, you can type in 10, oops, back up, 10, 12, close. So there you go. Um, anything that's between that 10 and 12 foot range is now white. So if you get a lake like Max Lake, we were up there to show you a little bit ago, it could be very cool to you know, to highlight some areas. You can drop some markers and waypoints on those. So again, to create a private marker or waypoint, you tap and hold on the screen. Let's close that out. Drag that over that. Click on the question mark. Tap on the marker. Tap on add. Boom. That spot is marked. Let me just check to make sure there are any questions or anything like that. No, I don't see anything. So uh, let's see here. Map options. Was there anything else in here? Again, um, Water level offset, uh, shallow water highlighting, depth contours, very similar information that was in the, with the fishing mode turned off, but the fishing mode does give you that fishing range. So again, pretty cool feature. If you're on a lake with a lot of structure, um, you can go out there and you can highlight that band of structure another way. So there's a, there's a number of really good ways to highlight um, structure or depth that you want to function, you want to fish at. Um, Let's see here. Magazines and guides. If you're sitting in your fish house, you're bored, and fish aren't biting. You got some really cool, you can go in here, you can download some, there's some um, information. Actually, it's kind of cool. Is some of the Navionics staff has, if you're, let's say, here's one I did in Rabbit Lake. I went over Rabbit Lake, and uh, there's actually some information on Rabbit Lake here. You know, um, not a lot of information, but you know, who knows? Might be information. Might be interesting. Um, categories. You know, boat maintenance. You're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, here it's got some information on that. And uh, well, let's see here. Um, Cover that settings. Let's tap on the settings right here. Um, there's a few there's a few thing, key things here that we need to talk about is um, map options. Um, again, we kind of went over this a little bit. It just takes it back. It's a quick menu. Here you can turn on your set satellite imagery, terrain, things like that. Um, boat settings for those of you that are maybe want to use your app in the summertime for boating, or um, another thing might kind of give you a little bit of I'll show you when you want to do an auto route. But here's where you can set your, your draft. And I got mine set for one foot. And because uh, I'm using it for ice fishing. That's the less, that's the smallest amount you can go is one foot. Um, auto lock, what that is, is it keeps your screen from turning off. So if you're tracking, you're creating a track, your screen won't turn off. So if you turn it off, when your iPad goes idle or your mobile device goes idle, it will then turn off your, your app or shut it down. Um, ranking, what that is, is people that have generated, user-generated content, basically your, um, your community edits type information, so not a lot there. But um, sync my data, here's a good, here's an important one. Sync my data, you'll want, if you haven't turned this on yet, you want to turn it on. And if you haven't created an account with Navionics, you will then create an account with Navionics. All your information is shared to the Navionics cloud. It's private information. It's not shared with anybody, but it's an offsite storage, just like with many computers. You know, some people have you know offsite storage of, of their um, computer information. So let's say you lose your phone, you drop your phone down the hole, uh, you'll lose it, you break it, you lose it, or whatever. If you've done a sync my data feature and you come back and restore your app and then you turn it back on, you know, log in, your data 
you know, all your waypoints, your route, your waypoint slash markers, your routes, trails, all that stuff will be then be, is saved and will be reloaded onto your mobile device. So um, great feature that will keep you from losing all your really good stuff. Um, oh, let's see what we got going on here. Travis asked, how wide is each pass of the sonar on Sonar Chart Live? It depends on the depth. Um, your typical sonar cone is um, for every three feet of depth, it's about one foot wide on a 20 degree cone. So, um, and uh, so you got to figure, like again, 60, you know, six feet of water, your sonar, your cone, your, your sonar chart live will cover about, about, you know, you know, um, three to one, um, about a foot. So two foot on six foot and, um, and on and on down there. So that's, that's just a rule of thumb or ballpark figure there. Um, restore purchases. So let's say you lose your phone and you get a new mobile. Let's see, you lose your phone or you upgrade phones. You can go in as long as your Navion it's within its one year, it hasn't expired. You can go in and restore the purchase. Again, it says retrieve previously purchased charts and upgrades. And uh, but the only the one thing there is if you can't do it across platforms. So if you have an Android phone. You buy an, an Apple, an iPhone, it won't transfer across the different manufacturers. So it has to be a like for like. So it has to, if you lose your, if you have an Android phone, you get a new Android phone, you can restore purchases. If you have an Apple phone, and you buy another Apple phone, you can restore your purchase. So right there. Plotter sync, we won't touch on that because that's remarine Wi Fi plotters. And um, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, at the very bottom here, about, if you're wondering what version app you are running, to make sure you got the current one. You know, if you go to the app store, it'll tell you what the current app is, what the current version is. So if you go to your Play Store, your um, iTunes account, and you look on there and it says, you know, let's say it says, you, you look on here where it says on your mobile device, you got version 8.1, and you go to the um, Apple Store or Play Store or um, iTunes, and it says version 8.4, then it's time to do, do an upgrade. So that's where you find that out. Um, one other thing too, I'm gonna show you real quick too here, before we jump out of here, is what I did is I tap on the menu button. And if you're ever scratching your head on how did that work again, or what was that he said? You can go down to the bottom here where it says help, and there's an excellent, excellent help function down below here. And it will go through all the features on the app. So every, once in a while, I get the question, I wish there was an owner's manual for this thing. There is, and it's built into the app. So you don't have to worry about losing it because it's not to worry about getting wet or anything like that. So it is. So if you're sitting in your fish house, fish aren't biting, you can fuss around with your, uh, go in the menu, down the bottom here, help, and um, um, scroll through and check out, you know, learn some stuff if you want. Uh, submit feedback. Navionics is very good about getting back to you about stuff. So if you have any questions, any issues, tap on submit feedback and type in your question. And uh, you can submit a question and so on and so forth. Let's kind of stop there for a second. Anybody got any questions on any of that stuff yet that I've kind of covered here a little bit? Feel free to type in any answers or anything like that. So give everybody a couple seconds here to kind of think about it, scratch their head, see if you've got any more questions or anything like that. A couple of one of the things here is um, let me just close some out here so you can see my screen. Is on the bottom here where it says stop. If you tap on that and you start going, it will then create a track or a trail 
remember back when I showed you some of those, um, well, we can, I can show you here, but if you tap on it, you started moving, you got the speedometer, you got the page up in your left-hand corner here where it says miles per hour, your, your, um, your, your um, headings and your or, or time and stuff like that. So um, what you can do is if you start driving around, you can, it will then leave a breadcrumb trail where you've gone and you can then either choose to save it and, um, and, and you can find that in your archives right here. So again, where I said webinar demo, and here's where you can play it back. I won't go all the way through that, but close that out. So let's say you're, you'll say you're leaving from a boat ramp and you're heading out across the lake. If you know where you wanna go, there's two ways you can get there. But you can hit start and it'll record that trail, that track, and it'll show you exactly where you've gone, your speed, and things like that. Um, again, the only thing on Android products is you can't play it back like that. So, but that should be coming shortly. Um, you can do is you can create a route too across the lake. There's, um, we'll show you a manual route. So, this is what we can do on both lines of product. So, um, Manual route. So let's say um, we're at the boat ramp right here. Let's um, saw the boat ramp icon right there. So there's our first first leg or where we're starting. So let's say we want to go to between that narrows. Let's try that again here. One, two, there we go. Screen's a little. So you can create a route across the lake. Um, you know, say you're on the last lake, you want to go to a fish house or something like that. You know where it is out there, you got a marker on it. Is you can create a route out to that fish house or area, things like that. Um, but we'll show you a little bit on the in route stuff here. Um, so anyway, uh, you can, if you want to drag that leg over, let's say you want to move it over there. Um, you can do that, move that one over there. To do, all you can do is, all you gotta do is tap and hold on the route points and you can move them around. So let's say you want to add one in the middle. You just tap and hold on the middle of the route and there you can add another one, in the, another leg, another point there. So boom, boom, boom. And then you can click on go. And now it will then, our active route is now highlighted in the dark blue. Let me see, hold on a second. Let's see. Um, Alan, you can't see any, uh, have you, uh, Alan, have, go to the sonar icon and tap on sonar chart. Do you see if you can see your um, um, contour lines, your depth lines? If you subscribe, um, you have to subscribe. Maybe I'll just throw this at you too. Is you have to subscribe to the Navionics Plus subscription on both platforms, one platform. So if you got Navionics Plus on your phone, it won't automatically transfer over to your tablet. So, um, so anyway, so if you're not seeing any contour lines on your mapping, lake map, again, let's see where are we at here. There we go. Get back to our active route right here. So, yes, you do. You have to, if you if you've already yeah, you have to pay for it on both platforms. Yes, you do. Um, so if you put if you get the free version on if you if you got the paid version on, as Alan's asking if you have to pay for, do you have to pay for the tablet if you've already paid for the phone? Yes, you do. You have to pay for both. It's uh, again backing up a little bit. 
There's two different versions. The free version, no, the free version won't have any contour lines on it. The free version will look like that. Um, Alan was asking he, if, you have, if you have the free version, again, just touching back originally, the free version of the app will only have, will have this look to it. So if you have the paid version, you will then get the sonar chart layer like we got going on here. Um, so um, we were talking about routes. So we got this route going on right here. Again, the highlighted dark blue section where that would be the leg that we're on. As we close in on that next, at, on the one, that will then turn to two, and then three will tell you which way to go. Um, things like that. So great feature to find your, find a way out to. Sorry about that. You want to see what it looked like, don't you? Um, you want to, that's how you would find your way out there. So you can do a route and then you could, uh, you could do a stop it or do a simple route, go, or you can do a reverse route. So now let's say you're out, out the, at the end here, that's where your fish house was. You can do a reverse route. You can tap on edit. Um, My route archives, here's where you would then save a route. So um, you could save your routes here. So route eight is one I just recorded, just did, the very top one right there. So you could tap on that. You have rec. So there we, the route I just saved is right there. And um, to find your archived routes, you go to menu, routes, and all these routes that we've created or we've saved up are stored up in this menu over here on the left-hand side. So um, current route is what we're navigating right now. So what we can do is we can stop it. Um, kind of a cool feature here is that, um, let's go back up here. We find one here that um, yeah. route demo. I'll just use this one here real quick to show you. Um, let's say we we trace the route we driven from the from where the the pin is. That's where I started it. Is that you can go on top of that and um, stop it. You can um, create a route over the top of that. So. Let's say I, create, I had a track that was saved out into the lake right here, a trail, is that you can then do a manual route on top of that and recreate that over the top of a saved um, trail. Then you can click on go. Let's see if I got a question here. So, any questions on the route portion of it? Stop that. So those are kind of the navigation functions that we got going on here. Again, to, to um, if you want to record your trail where you've driven, you would tap on start. And let's say you're, well, don't do it while you're driving. Well, let's say tomorrow or whatever, we're driving to work or something like that, you can pull out your, your, your app, your on your phone and set it on your console, turn on your mobile app and click on where it, um, click on the start function. 
it will record your trail all the way to work and back, or all the way to work and record your speed or things like that. Now you can't play it back on Android yet, but you can play it back if you have an iPhone or a Kia um, tablet. Let's see. We went over the map options and stuff like that. Um, anybody got any questions here? We're about eight o'clock. We're about an hour into this thing. That's kind of about how long I wanted to spend on it. Um, again, this will be recorded. I'll edit it up a little bit. We had a couple of minor technical hangups here in the center of it, so apologize for that. Um, but uh, feel free to ask any questions. Again, you can look me up at, uh, you can shoot me an email at kheadquist at nevax.com. Um, how close can you zoom in? You can zoom in about 70 feet, I believe it was. That's what I, Uh, depending where you're at, anywhere from 70 to uh, 70 feet is the tightest you, I've gotten zoomed in on. So it varies a little bit depending on where you're at. Let's see here. So on the satellite imagery, it'll allow you to zoom in to 70 feet and the terrain view, our no overlay, about the tightest was 130 feet. So um, again, as you can see, I'm down to 70 feet here. Any, uh, any other questions? Any way to import some aerials? No, it's taken off whatever the, the satellite imagery that Navionics is currently using. So there's no way to import any any aerial photos? Um, any adv or advice on creating aerial stuff? Uh, not within the mobile app. Let's say you know you. Uh, Ryan's asking, is there any way to create aerial stuff? Not with the app itself. If you have any discrepancies in mapping and things like that, you see, you can always get a waypoint of a particular area and contact Navionics. Um, I trying to remember. Let's see here. I think. Who um, shoot escapes the name of the of the uh, satellite imagery they use right now? But uh, um, but anyway, no, there is no way of creating any aerial stuff within the actual app itself. Anybody got any questions on the sonar chart live part of it? I mean, I touched briefly on that real quick, but um, that could be a great way to you know. To do some pre fishing or scouting be beforehand before you get on the water. When we got open water, or like this year, we should be on the ice, ice fishing right now, but some places are still open water. So you could actually get out there. No, that's fine. That's no, Ryan, is, that cool. works for me. So, um, any other questions that I could help you out with? Um, let's see here. I mean, just a kind of refresher course, you got to, on your, uh, if you want to center your, wherever you're standing, let's say you get off where you're at, anytime you want to get back to where, you center your your um, your GPS icon over where you're standing, you tap on the GPS on the lower left-hand corner, that pointer, and that will take you back to exactly where you're standing at. So, right there, there's a couple of different functions there. There is a uh, course up, north up and then up and then heading up so on that little part of it right there you know a lot of people ask well my phone if I drop it in the water and things like that you know there's a lot of great cases out there and things like that one thing I will tell you is when you get to your fish house if you've been using your let's say your phone is that the GPS will eat up the battery so you can go in there and put it like in an airplane mode or shut the app down and just you know turn the app off 
and that will stop your, you know, keep that GPS, internal GPS from eating up the battery so fast. Um, you know, you can get a jump pack for it and plug it in while you're sitting out there and things like that. Um, uh, my iPad, you know, of course everything's, you know, temperature dependent, you know, colder it is, sometimes things don't work and things like that. So you kind of got to play with it, find some good stuff out there. But uh, I would highly recommend a floating case for your phone if you're going to have it in your fish house because many phones end up in the bottom of the lakes. Anyway, well, that's about a little bit after eight. Um, I think I'm going to sign off here. Again, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, at, on, my, on my email. Um, I'm on Facebook, things like that. What's the cheapest way to do the sonar charts live? Um, Travis is asking, what's the cheapest way to do sonar chart live? Do you have, Travis, do you have, I mean, what kind of sonar do you have now? Do you have a, any, like, a, what kind of sonar do you have right now? Do you have anything right now that you're using a boat or a hummingbird, Lawrence, um, things like that? Um, if you don't have any of that stuff, probably the cheapest way to do sonar chart live, and it's a great tool that you can use later on. Okay. Um, you can go a couple different routes. Um, of course, the HDS stuff has built-in Wi-Fi, which, you know, maybe it might, that's out of your budget. You can look at maybe one of the Elite Series or some of the new um, Lorance stuff, the hook. I'm going to talk about Lorance because that's who I don't like. And, um, and uh, then you get that sonar server, that Wi-Fi module, you can tie that. You can't do that on the hook. You can do that on the Elite Series. Let's see, find, so right now there's a lot of great deals out there and a lot of the Elite Series out there. And that, that has a NEMA 183 outputs. You can get, the, get one of those and get the, um, the uh, Wi-Fi module. And the sonar server, or a real easy way to do it is to get the uh, Vexlar sonar phone, and that works off of Wi Fi. What I did in my duck boat is I took put the transducer on a piece of wood and just clamped it to the back of the transom and put a 12 volt battery in my boat, a little you know, sonar, um, you know, flasher battery, hooked it up to there, turned on my uh, sonar phone, and turned on my mobile app and started and started doing the recordings I showed you earlier back on uh, my PowerPoint presentation. So um, it's, it's about as, once you do it, it's pretty darn, pretty darn easy. It goes pretty seamless. Let's see here. I can't find Malax Knife Lake, the one that's closest to Malax. Um, is that the one that's on um, Highway 65, Chad? Um, the only knife lake in open that area would be this one that's, uh, should be, well, we seem to be on my, uh, iPad quick connecting here. There is one off of highway 65, I believe you can, you can also look that up on the mobile, on the, uh, web app also. Any other, any other questions I can help you with here? Well, with that, I think I'm going to sign off again. Feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions. I'm very quick to get back to you guys. So, um, with that, I'm going to. Stop out, drop out here, and you guys have a good night. Thank you for joining in.